Hello and welcome to the fifth video um, of module number two, which is how to submit a Gaussian job using the high performance computing resources at the University of Utah through the CHPC. And so just some key programs that will be really important that you download before you begin. So on Mac, um, you need terminal, which should already be installed. Um, but then for both Mac and PC, you'll need both FastX and FileZilla. Um, and then finally, for Windows, in order to actually connect to the CHPC, you'll need a program called PuTTY, which will allow you to connect in the same way as a Mac user can connect um, on the terminal. And so remember that we have sort of this general workflow wherein we begin with a ground state optimization in Gaussian, we'll check the log file for any errors. And um, in general, when a job is successfully completed, you'll see a fun quote. Um, and then you'll also see this important line that says normal termination of Gaussian. Um, there can be other errors, but usually these two mean that everything is fine. Um, finally, this will be followed by property calculations. And so this is dictated by the format of your input file. And so you might include extra, this is your um, functional and basis set, and you might include extra keywords such as a population to get NBO analysis or compute polarizability or really whatever you need um, for your application. And again, you'll check the log file and pull parameters. And for that, um, you'll use um, Python. Um, we have a in-house Python script um, to make polling parameters a little bit easier. And so if we end up, so here's just a general workflow, workflow for submitting a job. Um, and so I have um, FastX and Terminal open. Um, but I was showing you, you can like take the files that you had and output from Macromodel and you can upload them to the server using FileZilla and you can connect to your username at notchpeak.chpc.utah.edu or really any of the clusters of which there's Notch Peak and King's Peak and Lone Peak. And so you can see, I could upload those SDF files and really create a directory or upload them to an existing directory um, in my folder on the CHPC. And so it's just a drag or drop operation. It's really straightforward. Um, but then let's move on to FastX. Um, so this allows us to connect to the interactive nodes on the CHPC. So I'm showing here connecting to the Frisco nodes. Um, and so just showing um, what, what you have to fill out to generate a new connection once you've downloaded FastX. Um, I already have that same connection. You can see it's the same information here. Um, and so you can double click on that, um, type in your CIS password. You should connect um, to the server. And then go to that plus in the upper right hand corner and create an X term um, window. Here you'll load the module Gaussian 16 through the command module load Gaussian 16 and then type GV and ampersand to open Gauss view six, which allows us actually to both view molecules um, and then also build molecules as well if you want to do that rather than in macro model or maestro. Um, but here I can sort of open um, files that I have existing um, in my home directory. Um, just an example, I'll open up um, a phosphine ligand that I have. Um, I'll open up a log file, um, but you could, you know, you generally open up an SDF file um, from the output of your macro model conformational search. Um, but you can see here, um, for some reason, I don't have a bond. So um, the, the connectivity is, can be adjusted. It's just the coordinates that matter for this particular case. So I can re-add in a bond between that carbon and phosphorus um, in Gauss view. Um, but you can see it's a normal um, phosphine ligand. Um, and then I can also set up jobs um, in Gauss view. So we have a lot of automated scripts um, that you can use, but you can also set up a job individually in um, Gauss view. So if I want to do an optimization and frequency calculation, I want to optimize to a minimum, you can calculate force constants if the optimization is more difficult. You don't want to compute Raman frequencies. Um, here's where you can change the method. And so if I was doing an initial optimization, um, I would choose a, a 631G. If it was an anion, I would incorporate diffuse functions with that plus. Um, generally 631GD or G, 631GDP is good enough. Um, then I want to do B3LIP. Um, I can change the title 
Um, here, it's important to specify the memory and processors that you use. I generally keep the checkpoint file as the default name, which is the name of the com file. Um, there are other options here um, that you can change um, depending on what you want to do. You don't need to guess. Um, here is where you can do population level analysis. Um, you can do optimization solvated, but that's generally not recommended. It'll take a lot longer, but you, there's sometimes applications that require optimization um, in implicit solvent. This just shows how the com file will look when we save it. I had additional keywords, so I just deleted those. So now we can see that I'm optimizing these um, with um, no ROM on at B3lib631GD. I can save these um, this sort of way. I can save this line um, in a scheme, but um, I don't need to for this. You hit retain to keep that level. And then you can save this um, as a com file, um, just standard file save um, in order to save this so that you can actually submit the job um, to Gaussian in the format that it likes. And if you have more questions about the specific com file format, you can ask um, anyone in the group. But now I'm connecting to the server so that I can actually um, submit these jobs. And so you'll do SSH, your UID at Notch Peak or um, Kings Peak or Lone Peak.chpc.utah.edu. Here's an important Linux command. Um, you'll need is CD. You'll also need to upload submit scripts from the Chemistry Resources Dropbox folder um, to to a bin folder. Um, and so I'm using CD to change directories. LS lists the contents of that directory. Um, and then you can also make directories as well, because I want, um, so that's how you make it. So I'm making a test directory here. I want to copy that com file into that test directory. So that's what I'm doing here. Um, and then I'm going into that test directory. You can see that I have that copied file in there. And now I'm submitting it. So I'm submitting it to our owner nodes using the script sub 16 NP. Then you put the name minus the com file and then the number of hours that you want it to run. And so you can check that it's running. And so I'm checking here what's running on the cluster sig or the partition segment NP, which is our owner nodes. And you can see it started to run. Um, and you want to make sure that these usually run for more than 20 seconds, because if they error out for a syntax reason, it'll generally be in under 20 seconds. Um, but now I want to copy um, sort of all different um, com files for XFOS into this directory. Um, and so now I have a bunch more files, and I can submit all of them using the sub all command. So sub all 16NP and then the number of hours. Um, and now I can check again and see I have much more um, jobs that are running. But let's say I didn't want to submit those, and I've already submitted these, so I don't need to have them run. Um, so I can actually cancel these jobs. I'm using the s cancel command, um, and I can do the flags dash u and my UID. And now I should have no more jobs um, that are running. You can see they're completing right now. Um, and then they should cancel in just one second. Um, so now I have no jobs that are running, um, but you can see that I have a whole bunch of error and output files that were generated through the CHPC. And I have no jobs running. And so now um, we can exit the server by typing exit. Um, and that's basically how you submit jobs um, in a very sort of fast <laughs> fashion. Um, please ask um, if you have any questions um, about how to submit jobs or what sort of keywords you'd want to include um, in a com file. And so, and then let's see you had an error. Um, and so how do you know that you have an error to begin with? Um, so generally, you know, if your job takes a really short amount of time, um, you, you likely have an error. Um, if you look at the end of a log file and um, you have um, sort of errors here, so, um, it'll say error termination and for a reason. Um, so frequently what'll happen is if you um, put that you have, you know, an anion, but it's actually a neutral molecule, um, Gaussian will understand that the number of electrons um, that, you that you've designated in the system is impossible. And so it'll error out. 
Um, also jobs can time out. So the number of time that you give it um, at the beginning might not be enough time for the job to complete. And so when that happens, um, you'll generally just see this file end and you won't have any sort of termination at the end of that file. But let's say you have a different error and there are other errors that can happen. Where would you look first? Um, so the first place I generally look is sort of the end of that log file, but then I might look at the slurm error and output files that are generated through the CHPC. And if there are errors in the calculation or error or general output, those will be dumped into these files. Um, and then you can access those later. Um, a lot of times, you know, if you see an error here, um, one way is to Google these. Um, I highly recommend um, you can just Google these errors and odds are someone has had that problem before. Um, and so you can do an initial Google search. But if you're really stumped, um, I would ask someone else in the group first. Um, but then the CHPC help desk is a really, really helpful resource. Um, and they're really um, able to help you with sort of a range of problems ranging from a beginning issue um, all the way to something that's more complicated um, and they generally respond pretty quickly. Um, and so good luck with um, submitting these calculations and this is um, the end of this particular um, module. And so just some key references that I'd like to highlight um, is one from the Peyton group, um, which discusses um, the variability of sterimal parameters um, with different conformations of ligands. I can be challenging to decide how to choose a basis set and functional, but this journal article um, about the zoo of density functionals is a good starting point. Additionally, there are some good tutorial reviews out there describing how you might imply, apply computation to asymmetric catalysis. Um, if you want more information about the theory or about some of the applied things that you can do, I'd recommend um, some of these books. And these all link um, to the Amazon, um, to Amazon so that you can buy them if you want, or at least have a more complete reference so you know exactly what book I'm talking about. And additionally, if you want to know more about quantum chemistry, I would recommend um, David Sherrill's notes um, at this link. Um, they can be very helpful and they give you a lot more information than what I've given you um, in this module. And so with that, thank you for your attention um, and good luck and have fun.